Hi. All right, so in chapter four, we were introduced to the idea of merchandise inventory. And when we had problems, they said, here's the sale amount, here's the cost of the inventory, of the inventory that was sold. But we were never actually told, how did they come up with cost of goods sold? Well, chapter five is gonna take us into that and answer that question. Now, businesses often pay different amounts for identical inventory items. And this is where our problem comes in. If we pay different amounts, which amount do we use for cost of goods sold? Here we're gonna talk about the, the mountain bike company, TMBC. They purchase one helmet and it costs them 100 bucks the first time and $110 for the second helmet. So now they have two at two different prices. If they sell one of the helmets, what's their cost of goods sold? Is it $100 or 110? Well, recall that when goods are sold, we transfer from merchandise inventory into COGS, right? The entry for the second half of the entry for a sale is a debit, excuse me, a debit to cost of goods sold and a credit to merchandise inventory. There are four methods that we're going to look at with regards to inventory cost. Specific identification, FIFO, or first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, and weighted average. Now, suppose TMBC tags inventory items so that it can identify which one is sold at the time of sale. This could also be, if you only have two items in your inventory, you remember how much you paid for each one. So using specific identification, COGS for the first sale is going to be 100 bucks. COGS for the second sale, obviously be 110 because I only had two. Now, let's go back a second. Specific identification worked really well with two items. What if you were like Walmart and you have over 250,000 items in your inventory? Are you going to still remember what you paid for each one? Likely not. So we need a different method for larger amounts of inventory. The first of those methods we're going to look at is called first in, first out. And it's exactly what it says. We're going to use the first cost that we had first for cost of goods sold and we'll go through the inventory in historical, historical uh, order. So for our purposes of our TMBC, COGS for the first item will be 100 bucks. It's the first cost we had. Now with LIFO, LIFO says use the last cost you had first. So since the last cost we had for TMBC was 110, the first item that we sell will have COGS of $110. And the last one is weighted average. And weighted average says, look at the total value of your inventory, divide it by the number of items you have in inventory, and that's going to be your COGS. So for our purposes, 100 plus 110 is 210. Divided by 2 gives us a unit cost of 105. So 105 is going to be our weighted average. Calculated by multiplying the average cost by the number of units sold. We sold one. COGS is 105 bucks. Now, we've been talking about the flow of costs. There's two things we need to look at. There's a physical flow and a flow of cost. An example of physical flow is, uh, for instance, if I own a hardware store and you're working for me and I ask you to go into the storeroom and pull out 10 shovels and put those shovels on the sales floor, are you going to go back into the warehouse or into the storeroom and decide, well, this was the first, this was the oldest one we, we bought and this is the next one and the next, or are you just going to go back, pull 10 shovels and put them out? Obviously. You're just going to pull 10 shovels. That's the physical flow. The physical flow of goods from the storeroom to the sales floor. The difference is the cost flow 
is maybe different and probably will be different than the physical flow. And depending on the method that you use, the cost flow method, it will affect your gross margin. So looking at FIFO with a cost of a cost of goods sold of 100 bucks, we're left with a gross margin of 20 bucks. However, under LIFO, since we're using a COGS of 110, that gives us a $10 gross margin. So we can see that FIFO, LIFO, and of course weighted average, since it's an average, is going to be in between. So the, depending on the cost flow method you use, you're impacting the gross margin, which will, all things being equal, affect the net income as well. And over on the balance sheet side, depending on the method that you use, your ending inventory is going to be affected. Under FIFO, our ending inventory is $110. Under LIFO, it's a hundred bucks. And obviously, again, under weighted average, it's always weighted average is always 105. So we can see that depending on the cost flow method you choose, you're going to affect not only the balance sheet, but the income statement. So here's some information about TMBC that we're going to use to take a look at how this works. We have a beginning inventory of 10 units for which we paid 200 bucks a piece. We made a purchase in, on March 18th of 20 more units at 220. And then on August 21st, we made a second purchase at 250. Note that not only did we not pay the same for each of these three purchases, but we have inflationary pricing. In other words, we're paying a little bit more sometimes this, a lot more, <coughs> for each item. So what we wind up with here is an inventory of 55 bicycles that we paid a total of 12650 bucks for. And since we're charging 350 we sold 43 bikes. We're going to take a look at this sale of 43 bicycles under each of the cost flow methods. Under FIFO, remember, FIFO is first in, first out. So our first cost was 200 bucks. So we're going to value the 10 units that we have in beginning inventory at $200. So that adds $2,000 of COGS. But that's only 10. So we're going to go to the first purchase and we're going to use the 20 from the first purchase for which we paid $220 each. So that adds 4,400 bucks to COGS, but that's still only 30 units. We need 13 more. So we're going to value the next 13 from the second purchase at $250 a piece. That comes to 3250, giving us a total cost of goods sold of 9,650 bucks. That's under FIFO. Now, if we look under LIFO, hold it, sorry. <laughs> so let's take a look. We had a total available for sale of $12,650. Of that $12,650, $9,650 went to COGS, leaving us an ending inventory balance of $3,000. Under LIFO, we're going to start with the second purchase because that was our last cost. 25 units at 250 bucks is 62.50. And then we go to the first purchase next to get 18 units at 220 bucks. That gives us 39.60. So our total COGS under LIFO is $10,210, more than it was under FIFO. And since LIFO and FIFO and weighted average are all going to leave 12 bikes in ending inventory, those 12 bikes are going to be 2 bikes at 220 and 10 bikes at 2,000 
or 2440 bucks. Now here we're taking the goods available for sale. That was the total value of our inventory, 12650 minus the cogs here of 10210 So LIFO breaks it this way. A weighted average, first we need to get that weighted average cost. And we had inventory was worth 12,650 bucks. We had 55 bicycles. So we divide 12,650 by 55, and that gives us an average cost of 230 bucks. 230 bucks times 43, that was the number we sold, gives us COGS of $9,890. Subtracted from the 12650 of the total available leaves us an ending inventory balance of 2760 bucks. So here are the financial statements based on the three cost flow methods. Under, <coughs> excuse me, in the income statement, we had a gross margin from FIFO of 5400 a gross margin of from LIFO of 4,840 and weighted average again in between 5,160. On the balance sheet, looking at the ending inventory, ending inventory under FIFO was $3,000, under LIFO was 2,440 and under weighted average 2,760. Now, Think about this and answer for yourself, why is it that under the statement of cash flow, no matter what method we use for the flow of cost, the inflows and outflows?